Two trail cameras I keep in a steep mountain stream bed survived being submerged in a flash flood in late July 2022 and kept working. I've never done a formal review of these cameras, so I wanted to tell you their fascinating story. If you ever wondered why I get such clear, intimate close-ups of birds and wildlife here, it is because I keep two Camp Park T100 trail cameras right in the bed of a small, spring-fed mountain stream. I've bought three of the T100s over the years, and they are my go-to field monitoring cameras, left alone for weeks at a time. The camera lenses are maybe 8 to 10 inches above the surface of the stream bed. The two cameras are attached to boards that are held in place by heavy rocks. This of course means the cameras may well get wet and makes the cameras out of a reasonable warranty expectation and one has to be willing to accept the loss of cameras now and then to get great wildlife behavior video. This stream is usually very low with small pools that the birds and small mammals love. There was some devastating flooding in the southern and central Appalachians in late July 2022. Fortunately, my area just received some relatively minor, short-lasting flooding of small mountain streams, which in really steep terrain can sometimes happen with big local thunderstorms in summer. The water levels rise quickly and just as quickly go back down in the very steep terrain. Amazingly, the, both cameras powered up and they've been with water sitting inside. I'm not sure how long. I've been gone for three weeks. The flood happened a week or so ago, so this car has been sitting. You can see at least a quarter of an inch of water at the bottom of the camera. It's been sitting there for quite a while, so we'll see what's on there. Remarkably, the cameras kept recording after the flood. Here a weasel is likely going to have forest mouse for dinner. Here an elk stops by both the upper and lower cameras for a drink and to eat leaves from some bushes along the bank. The video is blurry due to the debris on the lenses. In the big scheme of things, this flood is really small scale, but adds up at lower elevations when the contributions of all the small streams accumulate. The moving waters sweep tree branches and accumulated debris downstream, and while not muddy due to the steep rocky terrain, the water contains a high concentration of eroded rock particles and rough sandy material that inundated the two cameras. Fortunately, no rocks or large branches struck the cameras. These cameras were powered by a long extension cord with DC adapter due to the darkness of the stream bed making solar power unsuitable for long periods. By the time I recovered the cameras, they'd been sitting for well over a week since the flood and had dry debris on the outside and were wet on the inside. I was pleasantly surprised that they still powered up and I knew the SD card would likely be good. I recently had a similar experience with Hurricane Ian flooding a Camp Park TC-06 trail camera, and we'll put a link to that story in the description. So if you ever get your trail cameras really wet, do not just assume they're ruined. The first step is to take out all the batteries and clean them up and get them out in the hot sun to dry out for at least a full day in the sun before you try and power them up again. Important that when you clean the camera, be careful not to scratch up the lens, which are typically covered with sharp quartz particles and rough rock sand. Carefully flush the hard particles off the lens and try to brush or blow whatever's left when they dry. Then clean with a lens cleaner pad. The camera screen and the lenses all fog up once they're out in the hot sun and all the moisture will eventually evaporate. You have to realize you're asking a lot of a camera, but if you're lucky like I've been, they'll come right back to life. The following videos were taken back in the stream bed after I returned the two T100s to service and they continue to work today.